So today I'm in downtown Manhattan where Jake Leary is doing a trick clinic at the South Street Seaport. And we're gonna get some clips, put it all together, hang out, have a decent time, and ride some one wheel. I should preface this by mentioning that I can't really do any actual one wheel tricks. Aside from practicing stable riding and figuring out how to explain things better, I just don't actually work on my riding very often these days, at least not to an elevated level like some of the more skilled riders in the community. That being said, I took some time and went out of my comfort zone. Not by learning one wheel tricks, but by going into Manhattan. Dave from One Trick Wheel and Jake Leary were hosting a trick clinic in downtown Manhattan at the South Street Seaport. The weather was nice, the turnout was pretty solid, and I have to say, I had a pretty good time. By the way, I want to thank all the folks who said hello and introduced themselves. Big shout out to James for being such a gracious fan, and to Sebastian for stopping me on the West Side Highway and saying hello. I always appreciate meeting viewers, it's both humbling and motivating. Thank you, truly. Oh shit, let's go! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Now, when it comes to doing tricks on the board, I'll absolutely admit that there are better folks than me when it comes to explaining what to do. So in this video, we're going to get some tips from riders who have actual expertise and also take a look at an interesting thing that may help you in your journey to learning more skills and tricks on this kind of board. A lot of the maneuvers that were focused on in the early part of the clinic had to do with jumping off the board, which I have to say gave me anxiety of the highest kind. Up until now, the idea of jumping off the board has been relegated to trying not to lose my balance while the motor figures out a way to reintroduce my face to the pavement. But being around so many folks doing jumps, varials, and bonks was very cool and very inspiring. Also inspiring were the tips and guidance that Dave and Jake were giving the riders throughout the clinic. By the way, that practice tool right there is called a feel wheel. It's a practice board that Dave has started producing in small batches specifically for learning tricks and techniques. It's actually pretty cool and currently I am a fan, which says a lot because I tend to complain about most things. It's similar in concept to something like a float life balance board, but with a limited tilting range and a focus on practicing tricks and movements since the stakes are lower if you lose your balance. It's easier to focus on and feels very close to standing on a one wheel while it's turned on. I like it and I think it's a pretty cool idea. Between this feel wheel and the float life balance board, I'm happy to see practice tools that take some of the risk away when wanting to practice certain skills and allow for easier practice indoors. With a summer full of thunderstorms in the Northeast, this is pretty useful. My name's Dave. Uh, ride with One Trick Wheel, OneTrickWheel.com. You can get this, uh, it's called the Feel Wheel. This is a training device for the One Wheel. Simulates it pretty well. You have a center pivot point and uh, you have target landing zones. And what it does is it takes the intimidation of learning some difficult tricks or simple tricks uh, on the One Wheel. So, quick example is you ever taught somebody how to ride a One Wheel and t teach them how to stop? You can say, okay, keep that front leg weighted, pick your heel up and make sure, and that will turn the motor off. So if something as simple as that could help out. And new riders have done it many times where they take the weight off the leg and it's like, it's not stopping. And then they go eat it 10 yards over there. So, and then the other thing is what it does is it simulates with that center pivot point. After you take your weight off of the board, use things like reverts, revert, you could do varials, you could do pop shove -its where you, throwing the board in either direction. You can work on weak sides, strong sides, and then you have to stick it. You cannot ride it out. More advanced moves when you're, you can load your, load your body up, and I wanna take all of my weight off of the board when I rotate. I'll try to do a 360, unweight, reweight the board. Now, on to bonks with Jake Leary. Say the 
first thing in learning the bonk is just to ride over small bumps and just learn how the board reacts when it's going over a bump. The motor will strain a little bit and it helps to just bend down before the bump and just do a little, like, a little tiny jump or an almost jump just to unweight yourself and just see how that feels, how the board reacts and try to keep the board level, prevent it from tipping over. That really is the first step in, in learning how to bonk, just going over little bumps in the street and you're, you'll just naturally catch a little bit of air. When you're in the air, it's, it's important, obviously, to keep the board level toe to heel because the board will tip over if you don't. And also uh, nose to tail because when the tire's airborne, it can spin really easily. And if it's spinning and you land, it's gonna kick out. And it's, it's really important to just try to keep that board level in the air so that you don't like kick out when you land. Then when you're trying to get some air from a bonk, it's not as much about jumping really high as it is about um, slamming the nose down to accelerate the motor and really accelerate, let's say the tire is here, uh, accelerate that tire up the obstacle. <laughs> so, well, the first step is putting the tail down. So right before, depending on the obstacle, either right before you get there, or you can also sort of just drag your tail in if you're coming in with a lot of speed. You can, you can just put the tail down early and, and you wanna wind up here where you have all this room to push the nose down. You'll notice the tire will bounce off an obstacle and the board will get airtime. So you sort of wanna just combine that with a sort of slamming the nose down and sort of, and, and jumping your legs up out of the way. So you're, you're pushing this one down and you really wanna jump, as you're jumping off, jump off more with, with your rear foot. I cannot do bonks. Truth be told, I'm still practicing curb nudges and by practicing, I mean occasionally I try to end up having a picnic with the sidewalk and then calling my wife to come and scrape me off the pavement. But while this was a day for me to practice riding around with the most expensive camera I've ever owned, other riders seem to have been making the most of their time around other riders of varying skill levels. It's days like these that refresh my appreciation of both the local riding community and New York City. There's a real beauty to this city sometimes, and I'm happy to see it, occasionally. After a good amount of practicing bonks, working with the feel wheel, and hanging out by the water, the group packed it up and moved to a couple different locations to practice curb nudges. This little group exodus was a treat because not only did I get a couple of fun shots, but it really highlights the difference between driving in Manhattan and riding a PEV in Manhattan. With traffic moving so slowly in a recreational district, it's actually not that intimidating. I probably should come here more. So, curb nudges. Probably one of the most useful tricks to learn on this board for the sake of getting up onto a sidewalk without having to find a ramp or cutout. It was here that I spent the rest of my time with the group, and I have to say, it was a pretty focused session. There was a ton of practice, questions and answers, and a great amount of ideas being bounced around. The first thing with the nudge is that you need to come in with a little too much speed. You need to come in pretty fast, because the first thing you're gonna do after coming in with too much speed is jam the tail down and that's gonna slow your board down a little bit. And if you come in slow, it's just gonna slow you down all the way and you're not gonna have that momentum to get over the curb. Because you do need to get up the curb, but you also need to keep going uh, past the curb. So you need the momentum of your, your body and board to keep going. Um, when you jam the tail down, it's not like an emergency brake where you're using your whole body to get behind the tire and, and, and lean your whole body back. You really just wanna try and do it with just your legs and leave your torso moving where it's going. So you can even practice that on the ground, just like really, and compared to a bonk, you do need to do it really quickly. So you can even practice on the ground, just sort of rolling and then trying to like tap the tail and then the nose. Uh, and that's, especially on a curb of this height, like a fairly low one, it's that exact same motion of just like, like 
tail down, nose down as quick as possible. Again, it's days like these that really renew one's appreciation for local riding communities and the benefits they can offer a rider of any skill level. I got to meet some viewers of the channel, hang out with some friends, and have a chill time getting shots and breathing the fresh air off the water. This trick clinic looked like it was an absolute success. The turnout was solid, the atmosphere was positive and supportive, and it seemed like riders got a lot out of it. I think it'd be a really good thing if more of these kinds of things popped up all over, where riders of all skill levels could come together and workshop specific skills and take some focus time together to progress their riding. Group rides are popular, of course, however there was definitely a different vibe to being at a clinic like this. No one worried about charging, range, or getting left behind. No one cared which board they were riding. Folks with pints practiced bonks and nudges alongside XR riders, and the goal of the day was just to progress at a skill and leave with a bit more knowledge and practice to continue on with. It's a pretty timely idea, frankly. Clinics like these are usually held at more major events. If folks in your area can coordinate smaller, more focused events like this, I think it'd be a really rewarding thing and a low stakes environment to build community skill and share experience. Huge shout out and many, many thanks to both Jake Leary and Dave from One Trick Wheel and to everyone that showed up. It is your presence that makes events like these successful. And once again, huge thank you to all the viewers that said hello. Thank you for watching. If you did not like this video or you thought it was awful, then please hit the dislike button twice. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.